Hey there, folks. So today we're watching some content that I actually recorded way back before the pandemic. Uh, it turns out my ability to get my legs underneath me and finish this recording um, took longer than I would have hoped to actually happen. What we're watching today is some material that I recorded that we're going to look for new zero day vulnerabilities in Redair. And when I say in Redair, I don't mean using Redair as a disassembler. I mean, we're going to be looking for bugs in how Redair parses specific file formats to see if we can get some hopefully code execution in Redair. But you'll figure out exactly what we ended up with towards the end of this series. So in today's episode, we're going to take a look at how Redair is built and try and get it built so that we have all the hooks to use AFL++. And now we're going to just jump into this and actually start getting to work. Hello there, folks. So today we're going to take a look at the start of a brand new series. It's going to end up being the first of the new year. So the first of our 2020 series. And what we're going to do is we're going back to a topic that we did a few times in the past and I think everybody really enjoyed working on, which is taking a potential target and going through the full process of trying to find new zero-day vulnerabilities in that target. So unlike previously when the targets were somewhat simpler, this time I've decided to go with a target that I think is going to be at least interesting to everyone because it's something that I imagine most of the people who are watching these videos are at least familiar with, and that is Redair. So for anybody who isn't aware, Redair is a reverse engineering tool. Uh, it's designed to do... Okay, let's just read it off here. Uh, it is a set of libraries and tools to work with binary files. The Redair project started as a forensics tool, a scriptable command line hexadecimal editor able to open disk files, but later added support for analyzing binaries, disassembling code, debugging programs, attaching to remote GDB servers, and other stuff. But the things that are interesting is it has a lot of architectures. It opens a ton of file formats. And realistically, it's a really good target for fuzzing because not only does it open a ton of file formats like that, um, crap, where is it in here? Uh, those format parsers, they're, all the code is written in C. In terms of a good target for fuzzing, it's kind of hard to find a better one. While Redair does have a bunch of tests written for it, in fact, they even have a... Let's jump over here before I talk too much. Um, they, have, they do have a reasonable test suite, and they've got code put in place to make it easier to fuzz it. Um, it hasn't really been used all that much, though. Uh, as far as I can tell, the I, I, it's unclear to me how often the fuzzing gets done. And it looks like it's primarily focused on trying to find bugs in their disassemblers. So that is taking the binary data and turning it into lists of instructions, not some of the other things. But we're gonna take a look at it. We're gonna see what we can find because hopefully uh, we're gonna be able to get today, we've got our nice little to-do list over here on the side. Uh, we're gonna clone ourselves some Redair. We're going to try and get it building normally. Um, then we we'll get it building with AFL. I'm going to cheat a little bit when I do that, and I'm going to use their scripts for it because they're already here, but I imagine it's going to take a little while. So we'll at least talk through how we would do it for other targets while that's running. And then the final step is the first target I want to look at is R... RA bin, not R2 bin. And let's see if we can find some documentation on this thing. Um, yeah, see, they've got apparently something that does fuzzing for it uh, that has it passing. Um, it's worth noting that according to like whatever these badges mean, uh, the code coverage is relatively low for their tests. 
they're testing 39% of it, which, I mean, it isn't that low, but it means that over 60% of their code is not getting tested in whatever this is that's testing. So I'm pretty hopeful that we're going to be able to find some interesting stuff here. But... Okay. Um... I want to read the docs here. Yeah, here we go. Uh, so the reason we're going to look at RA bin is because it does the thing that I want to look at first, which is it is entirely just the take a binary, extract things from it. Uh, we can pass in arguments, do things like give me all the classes out of this binary. Uh, we can get different binary info. We can do... You know, all sorts of things that are going to be useful. One thing that's worth noting for people that are not familiar with Redair, uh, and I'm really not before I started looking at any of this, is that Redair R2, the like built-in, I don't want to call it a command line interface because it's, um, it is a, own, it's its own prompt. Uh, whereas these, so if you run R2, it pulls up their little prompt and you can use that to interact with binary. And I'm contrasting that with the actual command line tools like Robin, the R2 agent, like all these things over here, I guess, except for Redair 2, are what I would think of as command line tools. They're things that I'm going to run from the command line, run them against a binary or something, and it will spit out whatever information I wanted. Whereas the like Redair normally it's a text like it's a it's a prompt where you're going to be interactively working with it. But the reason that's useful is because a whole bunch of the functionality that I can do in Redair is exposed through these command line utilities. In this example, the dash I flag is doing effectively the same thing as lowercase I capital I if I was in the Redair uh, prompt. So we'll see how this works out. Uh, that's the plan for today. Um, hopefully I'm able to get enough of a good recording in before the uh, little one gets a little fussy. Uh, I guess for those of you who haven't followed me on Twitter the couple times I've mentioned it or follow on the Patreon updates where I've put out a few updates about things that have been going on in the past couple months. Uh, since the last time I've done videos or streaming, uh, we've actually had a child. So right now I'm actually watching our infant. Uh, she's luckily sleeping, as you'll note it being a little early in the morning here. Uh, but she's sleeping nicely, so I'm pretty hopeful that she will stay asleep long enough for me to get that fuzzer up and running. So... Rather than waiting for her to wake up, uh, let's uh, give this a try here. So before I've started here, I've done a little bit of reading about it because while I've used Redair in the past, I haven't really done much with it other than copying and pasting somebody else's code. So once we get things building, I'm going to do a little bit of playing with it here uh, just to get a better feel for how a person would normally use it. Um, but other than that, the only other thing that I've done is I've set up this blank Ubuntu 1904 VM. Everything else is fresh, so if you're following along with this, um, I'm pretty much starting from scratch rather than trying. And the idea is that by doing that, we're going to hopefully be able to have something that's pretty easy to follow along. For example, we don't even have Git yet, so we're going to install ourselves some Git. Uh, we need to clone this. Yeah. And then according to this, it's actually really easy to build. We can just run sys up sys slash install. We'll see if that works. Um, uh, 
I don't have root and I want to install it as a home user. Awesome. You know what? Oh, what's the worst that happens? Oops. Said I have to run it as root. So let's give this a try. So I said we'd talk a little bit about this while this was going. And since it's building, we might as well talk about it now. And I guess talking a little bit about the theory behind what we're doing here is a good idea while we're waiting, which is that when we're looking for memory corruption bugs in C programs, one of the best places to look is where they're doing binary parsing. And the reason for that is that if you're looking for like buffer overflows and things like that, the binary parsers tend to be the best places where they have room to do things wrong. Um, that already finish? Okay, that's actually a way faster than I would have expected it to be. Okay, um, so the next thing we need to do is I mentioned we were going to cheat here. Um, well, I guess let's take a second and talk here. So we want to target the parser for these binary formats. And from reading about it, um, the formats they support is quite a few. We've got all of these different file formats. And I'm really hopeful that if we target this um, parser, we're actually going to be able to generate all these different file formats essentially from scratch. Uh, there's a few things we probably want to do to try and get things working a little bit um, more cleanly. Like we're gonna get this started and then we're gonna try and go find a few examples of those to throw in and maybe get our fuzzer up a little bit faster. Um, but it looks good to me. Um, I'm really surprised at how easy that was to get running. One thing that we are gonna do is, uh, turns out we can cheat here. They've actually written a, oops, told you it was a clean VM. Um, they've actually already, somebody's already done the work of getting this to build with AFL, which doesn't look that complicated. It looks like we just need AFL Clang. Uh, so if you've watched some of the previous um, streams, I've mentioned that I like using AFL++ better than the other forks. I don't have good, like, I don't have particularly good evidence like empirical evidence that it's actually that much faster or better uh, than some of the other forks. Uh, I guess to explain there, uh, AFL was written by Michael Zalewski. Zawilu I'm butchering his name, aren't I? Uh, Zalewski. Okay, I was. I guess I was right. Um, quite a ways back. But the last update he did for it was three, four years ago. It's been a while. Um, so this is one of the forks where people have taken that code and continued adding improvements to it. Uh, my understanding is that it's mostly maintained by Van Hauser, um, but I don't know that for sure, other than the fact that it says it here. Um, yeah, we're gonna get this built real quick. So we're gonna need to clone that too. And this we will also have to uh, we'll also have to build. Uh, which, if I remember how to do it properly, I think I can just make, can't I? I cannot, can I? Wait. Okay. Okay, um, so this is a good point. Um, they've deprecated the way that 
they want you to build binaries if you can. They want you to use AFL LLVM. Um, okay, they've got, I want to make it. Oh, okay. Uh, so I want to make this trib. So let's see if this works. Um, we're trying to build all the different pieces that go with AFL because given that this is kind of a first pass to see what falls out, I'm just gonna use AFL with some pretty default arguments. I want as many test cases as I can get. Um, what we're probably gonna do is we're gonna get this up and running. I'm gonna let it run for at least 48 hours fuzzing and just see what falls out. Uh, there's a decent chance that just fuzzing for, you know, 48 hours is gonna get several million test cases. And I am at least relatively hopeful that that's going to be enough to start spitting out some crashes, if not quite a few crashes. Now, I guess going a little back a little bit to talking about the theory. Oh. Actually, before I do that, let's craft all this stuff. Uh, oops. We have cloned it and built normally. Now we need to build with AFL. Uh, but talk about the theory here. Looking at binary formats is usually good for finding memory encryption bugs because that's where they're doing things, in this case in C, which is where we're looking for our memory corruption bugs, that could be potentially unsafe. They're looking for offsets of files. They're looking for, you know, quantities of things that may not line up with the space they've allocated. Things like that uh, make it pretty good. One of the things that we may end up running into, and I have no idea how Radar handles it, is binary formats and parsers for them tend to have failure cases that can dominate um, the state space. So a good example of that is if you have a file format that has a CRC that it checks. Uh, oops, I don't have things. Uh, oop, oh. Do they have the requirements here yet? Um, they do not. Uh, do they tell me the things that I need? I really wish, because I know I've put one together in the past. Because um, I really want to get this all done in one shot, rather than having to... Okay, you know what? This may... Nope. Nope, we're doing this the hard way. Pretty sure we need bison. I don't honestly remember what else we need. Okay, so. Ooh, Clang is big, is it not? Yeah, I always forget how big Clang is. It's a pretty big distribution. But let's get this set up. Anyway, what I was saying there was that um, 
with binary formats, sometimes there's something like a CRC in place, and the parser is going to fail out if that CRC doesn't match. For example, you have a big image, it has a CRC up front, and if that CRC doesn't match the rest of the file, the parser is sometimes just stop running. I'm a little hopeful that Redare won't do that, because in cases like looking at malware or something like that, you don't want it to fail. You still want to do the rest of analysis, even if certain things don't line up. So I'm hopeful that Redare will make this a little easier for me, but we'll see. Uh, make distrib. Okay. Um, we have CC, can't find GCC header files. Of GCC, my do I have them here? GCC eight. Okay. Um. I don't know. Lib, lib. Looks like it's for doing drawings. Okay, this may be working. can read this a little bit so I remember how to use this properly. So we build it. Um, uh, so we want to go into LVM mode. So we basically just run it with AFL playing fast. We can do that. So Python dash setup tools. It's a little unfortunate just how much of this ends up being. Did it build yet? No. Did it build yet? No. Did it build yet? No. But, you know, at least this is a loop that works. Unicorn, interesting. We have mainline unicorn in this version. I do realize how much saying mainlined unicorn sounds like um, a drug thing. Sounds like the um, kind of thing you would have heard in 
the dare class in school. Do they still have dare? Or am I being an old person now? I guess if I'm being an old person or for people who are in the US, dare was like an anti-drug thing they did for people in like middle school. Um, it's basically don't do drugs, kids. They're bad. But it's made fun of quite a bit in popular media because uh, turns out just saying don't do something isn't a great way to get, you know, teenagers not to do a thing. But the whole like take an egg, crack it, this is your brain on drugs is I'm pretty sure an old dare ad. So that's where that comes from if uh, I'm being an old and remembering things that are uh, old. But well, I mean, at least this is building. So hopefully we have basically everything. Uh, AFL playing Oh, I have to do a sudo make install. Yep. Okay, so... Playing not found. We're having trouble finding Clang or Clang Plus Plus. LLVM config not found. I'm going to make clean here because I screwed a whole bunch of stuff up, breaking it, I suspect. Okay, this looks better. I'm going to have to sit here and wait through all this again. But that's not too bad. Do this properly. There we go. Doing it in less is just going to be a pain. Like I needed to do that to get the error messages, but good. LLVM works. Looks like. Hopefully it does at least. But so I'm hopeful here that you know we'll be ready to start fuzzing pretty quickly. Um, we've got this to build. Uh, hopefully, it, I mean it took what four or five minutes last time, I think. Um, but hopefully this gets built pretty quickly. Uh, then we're going to build Radair again, which built shockingly fast last time. Like, it was, what, a minute to build? Um, and in theory, that's all we're going to need to do. Um, we're going to get that set up. We're going to start some fuzz jobs. And then we're basically done until we start getting crashes. Um, now, one of the things that may come up is we get to the point where we have the fuzzers running for 24, 48 hours and no crashes are coming in or we're getting stuck on code coverage. Uh, that is to say, we're fuzzing, we're making changes, but we're not getting anywhere new in the programs. If that's the case, we might have to go find some examples of each of those file formats. Uh, and the reason you would do that is because for some of these file formats, the minimum requirements can be really complicated. So by taking some trivial small examples and starting there, 
it can be a lot easier to get into the deep, actually interesting coverage rather than trying to generate them from scratch as a whole thing. But we won't know that until after we started fuzzing. Um, personally, I'm of the opinion that it is not a good idea to, I guess, over optimize your strategy. There can be a lot of. You can do a bunch of work ahead of time because it may be useful. Or I can do the easy thing, get it started. And if I need to do the harder things, go out and get all those for other formats, do other tricks to like manually create files or whatever I need to do to get in deeper, I can do that then. Trying to do it up front just means that, you know, I may do a whole bunch of extra work that I don't need to, as opposed to doing a little bit of work now and maybe not need to do the hard part at all. We'll see how this goes. Remember, this is gonna still take a while because we still have to get through all the unicorn stuff. reason unicorn took quite a bit longer to install I'm a little bit surprised by how long it takes to build I'm sorry build not install um, it's like given like comparing unicorn to QMU, the fact that they're comparable times uh, potentially unicorn being longer is a little surprising to me um, given that a lot of the unicorn emulation is based off of QMU. Well, I guess now that I think about it, it's very possible that it's because the Unicorn emulation is based off of QMU that is why it takes so long, but I don't know. They do have to build out, you know, a full CPU emulator and stuff for any of the formats we're going to be able to fuzz. So, I don't think you can hear it in the recording because of how the filters are set up and the way that my microphone is angled, but it looks like we're currently in a race to see if I'm going to be able to get the fuzzer started before the little one wakes up. Uh, she's just started stirring a little bit, so we'll see where we get here. Uh, so install. Yeah, we have an AFL playing fast. So going back in here, we're gonna modify this to use AFL playing fast until it's AFL playing. Uh, do we need to do anything else? I don't, oh, right, we need to do the LVM version. Which I can go to this way. We just run it, right? Awesome. Um, sys slash sys slash afl dot sh. Oh, let's make clean. Should we make clean? AFL. That looks like it's building with AFL.
and this really is a race. I know you can't see it because I don't have a camera hooked up at all. I don't think you can hear it, but I decimate. I've got maybe 10 more minutes before I'm going to have to stop recording, at least for a little while. And it's going to be really close to see if I can, which one finishes first. I'm pretty hopeful that if this just works, I can have this up and going in 10 minutes and have it fuzzing. But we'll see where we get to. But yeah, see, like we're compiling in all sorts of elf stuff. We're compiling in uh, all sorts of assembly stuff. These are all going to be really good things for us to be able to fuzz and try and get coverage into. At least I'm pretty hopeful that we'll be able to. It's worth noting that I'm not really doing any of the crazy stuff right now. Um, because there is some, there's a lot of things you can do with the AFL um, stuff that would. Okay, what am I doing here? Um, I just ran this, and if I do Robin two. Um, It was built at 342. So yeah, this is the version we just built, and it just worked. Um, so meter AFL ders Okay, so let's check this off real quick. We've now built it with AFL. Um, so I want to do an AFL fuzz, and I want to do, I always have to print out all these, uh, I, I, O, O. We might need to want to mess with this schedule stuff later, but for now I don't think we need to. Um, so AFL fuzz, I, I, O, O. Um, we are going to have to make a file, aren't we? Um, so we can either write it directly using this, or we can also use... Uh, I don't remember how to do this properly. Um, where is it? If it takes input from file, you can put thing thing uh, at at to do it. So, uh, do we do anything else? Sure, let's use uh, Radamsa because it took so while to build it. We might as well. Um, We have this, I need to do a Robin 2 dash I. Oh, right. Uh, crap. So you may have noticed that my mouse is being awful. Um, because the switch in it is starting to go. Um, the left quick left click switch is starting to crap out on me um and that's not great but um my replacement won't be in for a few more days um well we're getting coverage like it's spitting out new stuff which is what we want to see um we're getting really slow coverage though um, 
which isn't great. Like I would ideally be getting much faster coverage, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. Um, this just worked in 40 minutes of recording here. We have a fuzzer up and running, um, which is a little bit faster than I was expecting. I was expecting this to take about an hour, uh, but I really can't complain. Um, what do we want to do here? Um, oh, I need to run this in screen. Nope. The reason we're doing this is because running it in screen means that um, I can close this window and we're not going to lose anything. Uh, so we said AFL fuzz dash I I O. O dash R. Let's leave off the R for now. R bin two dash I. Oh, okay, so it's about the same speed. Um, in that case, we are going to pass in the dash R. It's up and running. It's ready to go. Uh, well, since the infant is still sleeping, let's take a second to look here. Um, I want to do... One in dash M. And I can't explain why you're so fabulous. I've seen you in my dreams. That's a little one. Are you not gonna let me get this up and running before you need some attention? Let's get that set up real quick. Wow, it's actually doing pretty decently. Uh, so I'm gonna copy everything from OQ into I. And we're doing that in order to um, get it to actually give us stuff. Uh, M F1. Okay. Uh, so AFL fuzz. The reason we're doing this is because the first one is in, is in explore mode. I O O. Uh, and then F two. And I also want to do P. So we're doing explore. Uh, we probably want to do COE dash P COE uh, Robin two dash I and at Yep. And then We'll do 
at least one more. We're just gonna do AFL fuzz. Um, actually, you know what? We've got some time here. Let's read what exactly it tells us to do here. So power schedules. Um, we want. Oh, so the main one should be exploit apparently. Um, okay, so let's switch that up real quick. Um, Kill this dash P exploit at AFL AFL fuzz I I O O secondary F3. Uh, we don't need to specify it because we're going to run it as explore. Robin 2 dash I at. at. And running. Um, and just to verify here, we're currently running um, yeah, this should be running at a speed that's good enough that I don't have to worry too much about not being able to use my computer. Um, Actually, so Streamlabs is using a big chunk of it, and I'm gonna shut that down in a minute. So let's actually start with a couple more of these. AFL fuzz, I, I, O, O. Secondary, F4. Let's just do the default again. Robin 2. AFL fuzz, I, I, O, O. Secondary, F5. Uh, yeah, Robin two at dash I at at. Oh, come to think of it, I'm actually um, I missed the Redomsa stuff in a bunch of those, so let's make sure we're doing at least one that's doing that. F6 R. Yeah, let's exclusively use the Redomsa mutator in this one. Why not? Um, is it a capital I? I'm questioning myself. Yes. Okay. They're all doing dash capital I, which is what I want. So it. Oh, crap. F4 is bad. Did I do that anywhere else? Okay. Good thing I checked that because one of our instances would be just wasting time then. it's about it for 
this recording session at least. We're going to let all these run for um, probably at least a day, get some good resp results in. Um, we're running, what, uh, seven instances? No, that can't be right. Oh, that's a typo. Uh, six instances at about 30 a second, like 30 ex executions a second. So that's 180 a second. So if I want, if I say I want a million test cases, one, two, three, divided by 180 a second uh, is 55,000 x seconds, which is it's so about an hour, uh, every hour and a half, every hour and a half I should get um, a million like, executions. So yeah, at this rate we should have probably 20, 30 million executions by tomorrow, and hopefully we've got something to work with at that point. Um, at the very least we'll be able to dig into some of the things that are being spit out and see what we're generating to see if it's actually what I want or not, or if we're getting just like random data. But in any case, it was nice to be back. I uh, definitely enjoyed getting to work on this. Um, now it's just waiting until we get some uh, hopefully cool fuzz results so we can uh, start working on the next step, which is turning them into actual exploits. Next time. Okay, everyone. I will see you in the next recording session. Well, I won't see you, but, you know, because these are going to cut up into videos and release later. But, um, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Hey, everybody. Hopefully you found this to be an entertaining video. As you can see, we not only were able to get Radar building, we were able to get it building with the AFL bindings, and we actually were able to start up our initial fuzzing. Hopefully this has been entertaining for you, and you've learned something about how to do some of these things. If you have, I'd appreciate it if you supported me over on Patreon, and you can find some links down below in the description in order to do that. In any case, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next week. Bye!